Welcome to another episode of Library Land Conversations. This is our chance to talk to people in library land. Um, today's conversation is with the founders of Pop-Up Art School, uh, Lisa Walker and Janelle Scannell. And uh, Greg, why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about them? <laughs> well, I mean, you guys have been on our radar for a while. I mean, uh, we met in Stoughton. It, it seems like a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we also obviously... I think, Lisa, we met with you in Situate, didn't we? When we spoke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, we spoke um, there. The business forum that they had. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a pleasure again to see you. And Adam, what would you like to say next, my friend? Yeah, I, I think, um, well, we, we did a recent blog post where we were talking about programming during the pandemic. And um, it, we're going to hear a little bit more in this conversation with Lisa Janelle about how, in some ways, they're sort of thriving, or at least, you know, doing the best that you can in um, in horrible circumstances. So, um, you know, we're happy to hear that things are going well for both of you. And today, we just wanted to hear more about your experiences working with public libraries and your communities and um, making, you know, making helping people make art. So. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, Lisa and Janelle. And uh, we'd love to start, I think, just kind of, if you guys want to spend a little time talking about what Pop-Up Art School is all about, you know, what kind of things you're doing now, that'd be, I think, a great starting point. Lisa, you could probably, all right. why don't you let them know what we do? Yeah, um, thanks for having us. It's nice to have a partner. We can go back and forth just like you two have a partner. Um, so. So we started, I think, about eight years ago, and we kind of fell into it by accident, um, starting this business called Pop-Up Art School, which has evolved into primarily teaching art classes in libraries. Um, and we started out, we wanted to get into teaching art. We're both artists. And we asked our librarian if we could do a very small, like, half-hour program weekly with preschoolers and their parents. And we called that the Big Mast. So we did that, would you stay for like a year and a half, Janelle? Mm -hmm. Maybe two years? Mm -hmm. Maybe two years. Yeah, and, um, and we had good attendance, but not always. So then, because we were already there, the librarians knew us, um, they had a grand opening for the Fog Library in Weymouth that had been renovated. So, and they wanted to do art programs for all generations. So. It, ourselves and a couple other people did programs. And so they asked us to do four programs on Saturdays for kids eight to 12. And I think we did them all in one month, right, Janelle? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And so that was like a light bulb moment because every single one was packed with 30 kids. Wow. And we're like, huh, okay, maybe this is our audience because we're getting a lot of kids that are coming in to do these classes. So that's how the business got its start. And then we asked our librarians, so do other libraries need art programming? You know, how do you go about that? And, um, and that's, that's how it happened. And we've been doing it ever since then. And we absolutely love being in libraries because librarians are like the nicest group of people ever. They're just They're so awesome. pleasant to deal with. And, and I think they're teachers, so they kind of get what we're doing and appreciate it. So. So we, we, we understand the history and it's, it's a pretty awesome transition, but, you know, then the pandemic happens. So the, the obvious question is, you know, what did you do? Like, besides, besides saying we got to keep on working, you know, how did you strategize making this virtual, basically, and, and still connecting with people? Well, Lisa and I were both in working at schools at the time. And we had a transition for a school. So we already kind of had an idea of how we're, how you can change your programs to work virtually. So we figured, well, we just apply the same thing to the library programs and who knows, maybe the libraries will do it. I don't know. Well, you know, let's give it a go. And so we just sat down came up with a bunch of programs that we thought that could work, maybe just using supplies they have at home um put them out there to the libraries and they 
seem like they had the budgets. We didn't, we weren't sure if they would have the budgets, but they did. And they were actually really eager to have someone come and take over their programs because they were so busy with curbside pickup, just getting things worked out and organized. You know, they had cut staff too, so they were shorthanded. So they actually found what we had to offer to, to help save them from, from still going. Because they wanted to be able to still show that they're out there for their patrons, that they're, they're not going anywhere. So we actually started to amp up and started to do even more programs and have kits that they, we could drop off with libraries or ship to libraries so we could expand the programs to use more materials. And that seems to be really popular to have the, the make and take or the take and make or whatever, you know, to have the, they can stop and pick up the kits and maybe pick up some books too and then work on um, programs from home. You mentioned that, I mean, originally it was preschoolers and then it was the age of 12 crowd. When we last spoke, you talked about kind of growth in adult programming. Mm -hmm. You know, how has that been? Well, actually, this morning I got, you know, I subscribed to Programming Librarian. And so they send out an email newsletter. And I was reading in there, and, and it correlates with what's happened to us. That um, that adult programming, virtual programming, has turned out to be um, something that people really want, and that they feel like will continue after this, because you know a lot of older people are alone. You know, if their kids are gone, they're at home by themselves, maybe just with their spouse. Um, but they feel like it will go on because, especially older people, they don't like to drive at night, um, or they don't like to drive in the snow. So. Um, the article was saying that it looks like virtual program, especially for adults, is going to continue and that it's grown, it seems like for most libraries, the adult programming. And I would say for us, we always get a really good turnout for adult programming. I think people really want something new, they want something tactile. Uh, Lisa and Janelle, as you're out in the library community, uh, speaking with librarians, library workers, uh, as you're talking to people who are working on programs, you know, what are you seeing and hearing out in the library world today? Um, they seem a little unsure to begin with, too, when this all started and what was going to happen. So it's nice. We'll, get, we'll talk back and forth. But what we're seeing, we'll, we'll exchange experiences. And I think it's also good for them to hear from us the experiences we're having with other libraries, too. Because yeah. sometimes they'll feel really bad that only a few kids showed up. And we're like, don't worry, you know. It's, it's like that some of the younger kids get too zoomed out and, you know, they may have registered for the class, but, you know, maybe they're just cranky or, you know, they don't, <clears throat> you know, they just didn't get, they don't want to be on the computer anymore. So they don't show up and the librarians would sort of assure them that they shouldn't take it personally. It happens to a lot of the other libraries too. Mm -hmm. And then there's other ones like the T programs are super popular. Those have been filling up. Whereas when we're in person, those are the tough ones to fill. Mm -hmm. So I think they're just more comfortable being on the computer a lot longer than the younger kids. So it's like a whole new thing that we're all kind of figuring out together. So that's, that's what I'm seeing, what are, that, you know. What are some of the more popular programs? I mean, what kind of things, you know, at different age groups are, are people responding to? We do a lot of felting, needle felting with teens and adults. Um, canvas painting is always popular um, for younger kids. I'm trying to think. Uh, well, they seem to like the how to draw yeah. things. Mm -hmm. You know, if they have a, like a certain thing they want, or like the Pokemon or, you know, any kind of like, like a dragons or Harry Potter, you know, you have a lot of the library kids are into the books and the characters, so they want to learn how to draw. And, you know, they can follow videos on YouTube whenever they want, but this is a place where they can see their friends and then they actually can talk to me and have me show them exactly what it is that they, you know, they need help with with drawing. So those I found a little more popular. How, how are they seeing their friends? Explain that a little more. It, it, it just the way the, the, the classroom is set up or how, how have you done, managed that? Um, well, we've noticed that a lot of these library groups, they're, they're the same kids. Like if you're in person, they're the same kids that come a lot. So they will know each other. We even have some um, that will 
go from one library to the other. They'll follow us, library, which is so much easier virtually, right? You know, yeah. so you can yeah. look on our schedule. Especially for kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have to get their mom to drive them. Mm -hmm. So there are advantages. We are finding there are some little hidden, hidden advantages. Yeah. Well, um, you... Oh, go ahead, Anna. Lisa. You've you've been using social media too. I've I've noticed you on some of the Facebook lives. Like, how does that fit into what you're trying to accomplish? Well, um, it's a place for us to send people if they want more. They can come and watch us on Facebook Live. I usually do like a clay demo. Janelle does a drawing demo. Um, they're they're short. They're like 15 minutes. And we're also uh, changing. Well, I should say we're changing. We're going in a new direction, we're going to open up um, like a monthly membership, an art membership for kids who are seven to 10. So, and also we teach on out school. So we're sort of in different places. So it's a place to send everybody, you know, like mm -hmm. if you want more of what we're doing, here's a place where you can go and get that. So, yeah. We're still going to do libraries though. Absolutely. Yeah. We're not going <laughs> to stop that. Yeah. We would never imagine you would. No. We, um, we we should transition a little bit to, to libraries. You, you, you know, I'm not sure which group, uh, Pop Up Art School or Library Land, has been to more. But but I, people always put us on the spot. Like, what's your favorite? Like, do you, do you have some favorites? Whether it's you know you just love showing up there and the energy, or just architecturally, like you know, g give us a few and and we'll 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 share ours too. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, I haven't been, even though I live a couple blocks away from Weymouth's new Tufts Library, I haven't been because of COVID. Beautiful. Janelle's been. She said it's just like world class, like amazing. So, it really is. Yeah, it, it's beautiful. I mean, I see it when I drive off of my street. I can see it. It looks great. Um, and I've been in the playground. It just, it looks amazing. Um, so without talking about that one, because I haven't been inside of it yet, um, I'd say Situate is one of my favorites. I really love it kind of has a Danish style to it. It's very open and airy, um, just aesthetically. I really like it. And also I like Hingham as well. It kind of mixes the old and the new. I don't know, maybe I'm biased towards the ones that are close to me that I've spent more time in, but um, yeah, those are, those are probably my two favorites. I may think of another one, but yeah. And Janelle, where are you at? Well, we always have fun when we go to Framingham. It's there's just so much there, so much to do. They always bring in a lot of people. The room's the main a little branch? big. Yes, the yeah, more the Moore Institute. The oh, this Moore Institute is. Oh, you're oh, Natick. I'm sorry, Natick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, Framingham's Framingham. also too. They've got Framingham's got that neat little that little one. Um, the McAuliffe. Yeah. That's yeah, a that's beautiful. Wait, Morris so Institute it is a, it's a pretty active one. The, when we go to Natick, we always, there's always a lot of kids there. We always have a good time when we go there. The room's a little big, but it's not so bad because they always bring in a lot of kids. It's different if you, you, know, you don't have any kids there and it's kind of small. Um, but we've been so many and they're all so unique. And I think that's what one thing we enjoyed about traveling around. Mm. Like even like when we would go to Wellfleet, it was tiny. But I really liked the children's room. I liked how cozy and tiny and it was filled with art and filled with books. I could just hang in there all day. If I had kids, I would just hang in there all day and read, read the books and look at the art and do programs. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. tempting. I think all of us would like to be spending more time <laughs> sitting in libraries, reading books, <laughs> relaxing, going yeah. to programs. Being somewhere other than uh, my house would be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you both for joining us. We we're, we're really so glad to hear that, that Pop Up Art School is continuing, thriving and finding new ways to be relevant. And, uh, and you're still having a great time spending time with the public library world. Yeah, yeah but, but we're us. sort of winding down, but um, how can people find you and, and get in touch with you, especially libraries that might wanna work with you? Well, we're at popupartschool.com. Um, we have a website with kids, teens, and adults tab. So if you're an adult librarian, you can just go straight to adults and et cetera. Um, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We just got a TikTok account. 
Um, and I think that's it. Yeah. Very cool. And on our, in our website, there's a calendar. Mm -hmm. And if you go into the calendar and if you're interested in taking any of the classes, now that we're virtual, all you have to do is click on the link and it will take you to the registration to register for the class. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, the, people are going to want to know, are there any costs associated or does it depend sort of what, what's for the patron or the, the library? Oh, both, I guess. Yeah. Like for what, the patron. Uh, more, more for the patron, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, everything's always offered, you know, the libraries pay us and then everything's offered for free to the patrons. We had a library ever charge, although I've talked to a couple people who do library programs like we do in other places. And sometimes library will charge like a materials fee, but we've never had that occur. It's always free. Yeah. Cool. That's great. That's well, great. I wasn't thinking of it when we joined, but I, you know, I have tuned in on the Facebook live. I, I need to do a class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll let you know when we're doing an That would be good. <laughs> All right. Well, well uh, to, to everybody who might be out there, if, if um, you know, th thanks again to Lisa and Janelle for joining us, but thanks for watching um, Library Land Conversation. And if people in the audience have any thoughts, um, uh, topics they'd like covered, or especially guests who Greg and I could, could talk to, that would be great. And you can email us at info uh, librarylandproject.org. And um, obviously, when these wind up on YouTube, you know, comment below and we'll uh, respond there as appropriate. We'd, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having thanks us. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you, guys. Always fun to talk Pleasure to you. Pleasure to see you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Stop on my way.